All right, everyone, welcome back to the Motorman Anatomy. Today we have Ralph. Ralph, thank you so much for reaching out. Definitely appreciate it, man. So tell us, what do you drive? I have a 2000 Honda S2000. A 2000 Honda S2000. Can't believe that this car is 20 plus years old. I know, man. It looks better than some of the newer cars. Yeah. It's crazy. Big time. So, walk us back, man. How did you get started in the whole modifying cars? Where did the, the love for cars started for you? It started in high school, man. Um, we had a group of guys, uh, Scott, Jesse, one of my homies had a Honda Prelude. Nice. It was all mortar, souped up, headers, pulleys, you know, exhaust. He could damn maybe he was ripping on Mustangs and and uh, so you advanced for high school stuff. Yeah, dude. That's cool. Okay. And he's he's kind of the one that got me into it. And then um, we started seeing people at school with their Mustangs and other you know Civics and whatnot. So that got me into it. Fast and Fierce was revolutionary mm -hmm. for all of us. <laughs> and that got me, you know, involved. Mm -hmm. I started with a, a, a Geo Storm Red. Really? <laughs> we finally find out with those. Okay, those drivers do exist. Dude. I always <laughs> rip on the Geos, man. <laughs> yeah, a Geo Storm. That's dope. Was it manual though? Uh, no, it was automatic. automatic. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. But I would always go from one to two. Hey, thinking that's I was the way you do it. Out of tragic life, only out of tragic <laughs> gang gang knows. Okay. So Geo Storm, and then I went to a, a Nissan Sentra, the two. What is it? Two hundred SX. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. Uh, and back then, you know, the car scene was different, right? Mm -hmm. So two hundred SX. Uh, I went all out on that one. I was in a car club, um, Team Elite, up in Pico Rivera. We used to meet up at the old, at the original McDonald's. Oh, okay. And this was when a Evasive was be before Evasive. So, okay. you know, we were all competing in the car club scene right now, right? So, um, had a Nissan Sentra. I went all out, dude. I did the rear, and I'll, I'll send you some pictures. Hell yeah, please. I, I did the... the <laughs> and you found pictures of the Geo, send it to us. Yeah, dude. <laughs> we did a, a swap. We did the Altima headlights, the uh, taillights, when they first came out. Mm, okay. It was around that time when those Altima came out and... Um, yeah, we did the rear end as the, as that. The front end was, you know, original wide body. I'll send you pictures, man. Oh, it's gonna be fun. Um, from there, we went. I went on to um, uh, Civic Si, uh, ninety nine. Love that one, dude. I did all Type R internals from Japan. Wow. And um, that escalated quickly. Yeah, dude. And uh, it got stolen. Nah. Yeah, and I was gonna get low jack. I swear, dude. I was gonna get low jack like the the week after, of right? Of course, it always happens. And dude, it got. And they never found it. Such a bummer. And you never get back what you never. put into it. I got shit, dude. I didn't get it. And you know that mm -hmm. the parts were expensive, the labor. Um. So after that, it broke my heart. I kind of slowed down. I got a truck, um, a Ford Ranger, lifted mm -hmm. it. And dude, I couldn't get it. I, you know, my heart was always with imports. Love it. So I went back, got an Eclipse. And Ooh, okay. Yeah. Um, what was it? I think it was a 2000. Um, love that car, dude. But it was not a Honda. <laughs> it was not really? a Honda, man. So that's when um, I, go, I, you know, I went back to my roots. I, I remember falling in love with that 2000, like I told you, um, back in high school. Was it a magazine or a car show that you went to, or how did that? Uh, it was mag. It was the magazines. Mm -hmm. um, I had a friend, a female friend. She had one. Um, she let me drive it. I didn't know how to drive stick, but nice. She, she let didn't me, know that though. Nah, <laughs> she, she let me drive it, and and I, I fell in love with it, dude. That was it was a AP two, and um, and you know, I finally got a, a career, a job. Mm -hmm. Was able to save up money, and voila, I bought her. Obviously, the car is very minimal, very, mm -hmm. very minimal, mm -hmm. and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But what is the vision for it? The vision is sleeper, all sleeper. But the the holy grail is what's in the mortar. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna show you, or I won't talk about it until I pop it. But that's where the it's the C D series. Yeah, I dude. A single timer. He did the unthinkable. He wouldn't be 18 on it. <laughs> but, but, but it, is that? I mean. Obviously, that changes over time as you get older and stuff like that. Yeah. For the outside, though, um, let, well, let's get into it. I mean, yeah. it, it's very minimal, and, and I think part of it is very difficult to keep a car stock looking. Yes. It is. Yes. I mean, people may not think that, but it is, it is very difficult just because, especially with S1000, it has a lot of aftermarket support that can make the car look very aggressive in yeah. two seconds. Yeah. But then you get into this rabbit hole. Yeah. So, 
how have you been able to maintain just the cleanness oemness of the car you nailed it dude it's it's hard to not follow the scene because mm -hmm. the scene's the scene's always been there and people have taken it to a whole different level right and for me it's like i'm at that age where i don't have the time to get hassled got it so for me it's like i just want to stay as low-key as possible but you know everything is in the mortar man and that's where my you know you can say your upgrades would that's, where, my, that's where your money yeah. and your finances go to work. yeah for me it's just keeping it you know it's beautiful from factory it, it doesn't need any more but they can even be even more mm -hmm. beautiful when you when you do the body kits and the wide body it's so funny because i'm sure this I, I can at least think of two or three people at the top of my head that are nodding their heads like yes yeah yeah there's no reason why to do all these over fenders there's no reason to do the slam especially with a performance car like this yeah. you know uh so i i think there's a, a lot of people out there that definitely do agree with you yeah. and then the, the sleeper look just just works so nice for you you know yeah. um so has it been respray has it been modified any way she performed um so no respray as of yet mm -hmm. um that's going to be done in the future i want to keep it silver stone but uh modifications to the body itself you know probably the the lip um it's difficult to find the the factory oem uh, oem arm and leg right yeah dude and if you do it's like over a grand i'm not spending that much <laughs> i'd rather spend that on my mortar um I, but I did get the ap2 thank you christopher for the hookup uh i got the ap2s um wheels there's more options for tires i'm running the r1 um that excuse me the 71 r's 215s in the front 245s in the back nice and they stick dude they stick really nice the only problem is they pick up a lot of rocks well they're sticky yeah, yeah so it's <laughs> like it all. Okay. it's shooting it man but um other than that it's stock dude probably um you know i got a new uh top because when i had bought it there was it was just old now let me ask you why not um have you considered aftermarket coilovers but you know keeping a, a stock height uh yes i've been looking at that um i'm not sure I, i'm pretty sure you're aware uh, lht performance um they do i see a, a bunch of their videos and i like how they keep their suspension oem looking but it's up it's an upgrade right mm -hmm. so that's the that's the route i want to go maybe an inch half an inch mm -hmm. um but i don't want to go super low because the car's already low as it is mm -hmm. you know and i'm not trying to scrape it scrape anything up and damage my my oil pan or whatever right um but it's fine it's fine the way it sits though it looks freaking beautiful man and it performs as well yeah i think, I think you, so you're trying to look at it from the performance uh level uh mm -hmm. more than the actual you know visuals aesthetics yeah. part so i think that's that's very true i mean obviously if you do the right aftermarket and you pair it with the right quality parts mm -hmm. you can get more functional out of it um but obviously you have to do everything right you can't yeah. just you know throwing coal overs on a 21 year old car and expect now there's other stuff to break you know exactly okay and then for the wheels i mean um what is i mean for those like myself that don't know you say you want with the ap2 wheels are they wider than the ap1 or what is the, the deal they're a, they're a little bit bigger wider um the ap1s are like 16 i think they're 16 the, the ap2s are 17s and uh for the ap1 the 16s there's not really a good selection of tires, uh, you know, okay. there's just not, it's, there's not, I didn't even get time to invest because it's like, what am I looking at, you know? <laughs> so I was like, dude, I got to swap, either I get aftermarket, um, which are really, there's nice ones, but I love AP2 wheels, man. These are the V2s. Okay. And uh, they have really good se tire selection and, and that's why I went, I went this route. No, that absolutely looks beautiful, they're, man. They're heavy. So maybe in the future, because I'm going to start tracking. I've never tracked. Well, congratulations. And, uh, it's going to be fun. And, I, and it's, it's, it's going away from the street, the street racing. Mm -hmm. I'm going away from that. Um, I got family, and I'm not trying to. Got more responsibilities. Yeah, I'm not trying to get caught up. So I'd rather just do what I got to do. It's safer. It's smarter. Just go to track. So Definitely would recommend for your first time doghouse events. Mm -hmm. uh it's a, it's a it's a group of guys who host track days and nothing but love obviously honda nice. heads and they they take the time to actually teach you like when you're a very first beginner 
they'll take you through they'll, they'll really coach you which is good so dollhouse event i would definitely recommend man nice thank uh, you for your first day at honda i know that a couple of my buddies did that mm -hmm. and they really enjoyed it they felt like comfortable it can be very intimidating going to a track yeah but yeah. all these other dudes that have been there you know it's whatever's to them now and for you you're like oh shit, here we go the first time on the track so definitely would yeah. recommend them okay and in the back you just kept it again very yeah. simple has exhaust been uh modified any way to perform yes <laughs> yes it has um so i originally had the apexy world sport 2 uh, mm. it's a 60 millimeter mm -hmm. or 60.5 millimeter it's, it's very um it's i think it's even smaller than uh, mm -hmm. oem because oem is like 62 maybe 62 millimeters um and it ends up going to like 58 millimeters because it splits mm -hmm. so the splits about 58 millimeters so it's oh, okay. give and take but um I had a H the HKS high power. I think it was a 70 millimeter or wow. It was high. <laughs> it was a single, dude, and um, it was so loud. You know, I was too like, much. man, I can't do it. <laughs> so um, you I, are old. I know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I went to I went with the Apex, put it back on, and then uh, even that, I was like, the muffler canisters, um, they shine a lot, mm -hmm. and I'm starting to notice that cops will look at your exhaust and and if they think it's modified they're going to pull you over and yeah, that leads into you. other mm -hmm. situations so I, at this point i was like i'm going to go back to stock dude so i ended up putting up i ended up putting on the the oem ap2 um exhaust it's quiet it sounds nice and i still get my power it was okay. tuned on a 60 millimeter exhaust exhaust so it's there's no it shouldn't be that much of a yeah. difference or uh loss of power yeah i'm awesome. running test pipe and even with the test pipe it's not loud it is not loud at all. You're an old man now, man. I know. <laughs> that's it. That's cool, know. though. You know. I know. That's, that's dope. That's 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 fine. I mean, yeah. you went through those faces. All right. So, OEM stock. When I bought the, when I bought the car, the seats were perfect. There's no tears. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little wrinkle, but you know, it's it's leather. It's it comes leather. with time. Oh um i upgraded the the stereo um uh, door to the ap2 it matches the color of the car so i was like screw oh, it okay. got my gauges my afr my oil pressure helps uh monitor the engine's health mm -hmm. um but most of it's stock um so nice, a little aftermarket thing for my cell phone mm -hmm. um aftermarket shift knob uh, i got that from voodoo uh, it's a nice one, dude. Mm -hmm. Future plans for the interior? Uh, to be honest, nothing. <laughs> That's so yeah. Nothing. Maybe some uh, o OEM carpets that you know the S two thousand because I didn't come with any. Uh, maybe that. Um, maybe clean up the the trimming. Mm -hmm. But even you know even that I just, just I don't want to touch. It's really I mean it's a no. driver's car. I mean, the the OEM shifter yeah. is so short and direct. The wheel is a perfect sizing. Obviously, the dash. Yeah. Uh, we know that's one of the best ones ever made. Yes, such yes. a great design. Um, it just doesn't need much. I mean, yeah. it's it's an amazing little car. Like I see people that have the uh, the wheels that pop off, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that's cool. I thought about it for a minute, and I was like, Nah, man, just <laughs> OEM is OEM. You know, OEM is good. It's good from factory, dude. They made this car already ready to go from factory. The most well-rounded car yeah. from factory. Yes, yes. I love that, man. Yes. Cool. Let's talk engine. In oh, here we go. Here we go. The holy grail. Go. The good stuff. You, you know that Chicago Bulls entrance song? I don't know dun, the song. Dun, dun, oh. <laughs> right here, dude. <laughs> I swear, if it's just a big ass air intake? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no dude. Subscribers are gonna leave <laughs> You're going to get hate mail, man. And no. I'm going to include your email. <laughs> there you go, man. Woo. Okay. Yeah, dude. This is what's up. So, yeah, you definitely mentioned that you just want to focus on the engine compartment. Yeah. First of all, I like the fact that you're okay with that you're okay with not following the trend of let me put aftermarket wheels t37s you know yeah suspension um 
it's okay not everybody has the same taste and like i told you i can think of at least three people that are like nodding their heads like hell yeah man keep it stock sleeper look yeah and this is where you spend your money this is it dude so tell us uh ralph what Ooh. are we staring at man all right um ct engineering originally known as comptech uh supercharger kit it's running the 1220 blower uh one of the it's the newest blower mm -hmm. the best one to have is the 1200 because uh you get more power out of that um, i'm running a 3.2 inch pulley that's producing 15 psi Ooh, yeah so that's um, nice that's high so what with this one you know it's limited because of the the speed it's able to produce and i'm talking about the blower with the 1200 you can go you know it would give you even more power mm -hmm. um but i'm fine the way it is um, right now i'm assuming it's really reliable and oh yeah healthy. okay yeah after uh after cooler attached to the manifold i'm running the three bar sensor uh sos i have the gfb um below, uh, bypass valve okay. um with the whistle trumpet so when you when you shift it like it has that subaru whistle kind of okay um i used to have the turbo smart give you that psh, and i was like the i want to yeah it's like psh. <laughs> <laughs> i was like nah i'm gonna switch it up i'm gonna switch it up man you're like I, i'm cool with that okay <laughs> um id 1050 injectors um uh, uh am uh, fuel pressure sensor am um air pressure sensor so all that is communicating with the infinity um, ECU mm -hmm. and uh, it's just keeping the engine safe you know mm -hmm. safe and healthy it's you know um, that's my thing it's reliability mm -hmm. um, and safety you know definitely, keeping the engine safe um, and then the header oh the header dude oh, man Looks so beautiful huh? so the header guys <laughs> if you don't know now you know Comtech or used to make a carb legal header and mm. they stopped making those years ago and I ended up finding this from the East Coast, man. I got a good deal. It's carb legal, so if you get rolled, it, the carb the carb uh, emblem is on there. So it's it's good. It's a good header, okay. um, but nothing beats factory header. Mm -hmm. But um, but you know, there's some skunk too, and okay. that gives you you know that power. But yeah, I ended up going with the header. It sounds nice, um, and and it's helped the the engine. Coolant still stock? Yes, Scott radiator. No uh, issues with overheating? Uh, no, oh, no, no, nice. no. Everything's good. I, I, the after cooler helped a lot. Mm, okay. And um, like I was telling you, I, I'd like to do the vents, um, mm -hmm. the vent uh, hack or mod, mm -hmm. and just cut them up and put some vents so the air Let can it breathe a little bit better. Um, so yeah, OEM um, uh, radiator. I, I just did my clutch master cylinder. So guys, uh, <laughs> S two thousand owners, if it's black. You need to re you need to do it, man. It's an easy, time-consuming, <laughs> but you need to change that because you don't want to ruin your um, you don't want to ruin anything. Gotcha. Um, I'm making about 430 to the wheels. Shit. It flies. I'm taking out Mustang, G you know, the GTS. I'm taking I'm keeping up with Hellcats. Taking out old school Corvettes, Subarus. But like I told you, man, those days are over, and uh, I want to go to the track. <laughs> 450 uh what do you think torque do you remember uh it's about two something okay two wow. something torque how hard is it for you to put the the power down now yeah it's a little it's a little really yeah it's a little difficult from first and first all of first and uh, all of second uh -huh. but after that dude you're you're gone you're yeah. gone once it once you feel it <clears throat> it's taking off um i've gotten a lot of compliments people don't know what's underneath until they hear the the thing spiel the mm -hmm. supercharger sp or the blower spiel and they're like dude we didn't even know you mm -hmm. couldn't we couldn't even hear you uh, roll up you know and mm -hmm. and that's what i like dude i like people who appreciate um you know simplicity yeah dude just or focusing on just uh the functionality of things yeah like the power yeah any future plans for the engine compartment um <clears throat> just a retune okay you know if anybody knows a good tuner please let me know i need a I need a new tune. Um, OCLA area? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, look. Go ahead. Running flex fuel, by the way. Okay, I was about to ask you. I'm like, are you oh, okay. running pump gas or are you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, flex fuel. Flex fuel. E85. What percentage would you say? All e It's 85. 
Oh, one, just one hundred percent. Oh, okay, so one hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I have ever since I did the flex wheel, I've never done ninety one. But if I ever get stuck somewhere, I can always fill up with ninety one. Okay, okay. But okay, gotcha. you can't push it the way you would as on. You're e. not gonna get the same power. Yeah. And it was two on eighty one. I'm assuming. Eighty five. Eighty five. I'm sorry. Yeah. It okay. was two on eighty five. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the flex wheel is it's more of a safety because let's say we're you know you're somewhere and you need gas and there's no 80, uh, 85 mm -hmm. you can just go 91 and just cruise home you know take it easy so you haven't run a 91 at all not since it's not since i did the flex okay, wheel okay okay so you haven't been able to experience the difference yeah in power. it's, it's going to be noticeable to. you don't want to you're like no, i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to you get your jugs ready well you better get ready when you go to the track you gotta get some like, extra jugs there i know because i'm sure it eats it like yes. there's no tomorrow but yeah, that's it, where the 400 and some horsepower comes yeah. from. yeah okay it, no, absolutely gorgeous man thank you uh, uh i'm just gonna take a guess internals of uh transmission and engine stock still in uh, engine internal stock the clutch transmission is upgraded the stage two to uh, i'm running the act uh, cl uh oh, okay. clutch um it's i think it's on the stock flywheel uh ap1 flywheel but the, the clutch and all the other components are act mm -hmm. um and it helps do it grips really nicely and and uh it helps put the power down good yeah absolutely gorgeous man thank it you. looks stock thank you it looks stock and i think you nailed it with the color everything it does yeah. not look out of place i wouldn't know if i didn't know it's 2000 i would be like well that's just a regular s2000 nice. but there's obviously a punch to it yeah. and i think that's when you know you did it right yes when you can tell that there's been something modified yeah and 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 the and the and the people will pre you know what i like the most is when somebody appreciates it like hey man that's cool and you know they don't hate because you know we're all we're all family at the end of the day and we have to support each other you know so yeah we're all car enthusiasts man, yeah, man. especially in the honda world yeah we're the all the ones in the world man we're all on the same team fellas <laughs> we're all on the same team man you know except those geo metros those <laughs> <laughs> you're on your own. You're on your own. <laughs> it was rad too. It was rad too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. All righty, man. Well, thank you, Ralph. First of all, for reaching out. Thank you for being such a supporter of the channel. Uh, definitely appreciative, man. And I, I really like the fact, the passion that you talk about Honda. I think that that's the reason why this channel has been so successful because yeah. there's people like you who legitimately appreciate these cars and take care of them. And, and, and keep them, uh, at least we try to preserve them in the best quality yeah. that we can. So thank you for that, man. Uh, I think you definitely have been a motivator and, and educator for a lot of people right now. And, um, and we really appreciate it for that, ah, man. Cool, man. Any shout outs? Yeah, uh, just a few, not a lot. Um, Takes out a whole list. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. <laughs> shout out to uh, Michael Youssef, Charles Stanley, um, Alex Rebeg, you guys changed my life. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, shout out to um, the S2000 boys up in Mission Viejo. Appreciate you guys for reaching out. Uh, can't wait to see you at the at the track. Um, shout out to uh, all the S2000 enthusiasts, and not only that, like all the import, you know, enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. And and you know, like I said earlier, we're all family, man. And uh, we just gotta support each other and and be there for each other, mm -hmm. help each other out. Um, and lastly, shout out to Gus, uh, Automotive Anatomy. You've done a good job, man. Um, you know, I've seen people sell out, and you don't, you're not a sell out, brother. Well, not there yet. You never know. <laughs> you're not a sell out. <laughs> you are. You, Next you, week. <laughs> up the video. Hey, guys, it, you became a sell out. <laughs> hey, when you see him rolling up in like a, a Lamborghini, guys, that's when you know. I'll put Honda badges if that helps. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but no, dude, your platform is beautiful, man. You you give the little guy the, the opportunity to share <clears throat> what they have, and, and, it's, and it's money that we work hard for it's not money that was given to us or easily made you know it's money that we've earned hard you know worked hard for and we've invested in our and our love and passion you know and that's our cars and so i'm gonna you. go and disagree with you <laughs> i think that we're not the little guys i think we're the majority i think awesome. that social media and society thinks that hondas are are, are cheap uh whatever that means yeah. Well, we're we're actually the majority. We're the enthusiasts. We're the ones that care about the cars. Yeah, man. Uh, they may not be running all the time. Yeah. And we might destroy them, but we have that passion for it. And it just happens as everyday budget builds. Yes. You know, people like you and I that have other responsibilities and priorities, 
and I think that that's what makes us the majority. That's what makes us the the best True. enthusiasts out out there, and that's the reason why um, the platform is not as big as it could be, because you're right, um, we're not rolling in Lambos, yeah. shooting fires, yeah. you know, rolling in the freeway. 1320 everything and that's fine that's not my thing right that's not your thing right but i think that that's necessarily this is the enthusiast world this is the, the majority of the people that um, really care for cars yeah it may not be mainstream exactly but that's different than uh not being you know the the, the top tier right of our of our you know hobby and so it's people like you man it's people like you that are killing it uh loving every second of it and really, really appreciate what the car is, whether it was a Honda, a Nissan, no. a 240, a Subaru. There's actual enthusiasts out there, and, and that's the niche that we're going for. So thank yeah. you, man. I think that, um, like I said, I'm just a dude with a GoPro, man. It's <laughs> all of you guys who are killing it yeah, and man. taking the time to share your stories with everybody else, man. Yeah. Definitely appreciate it, man. Uh, thank you, brother. Yeah.